I've never been sick a day in my life. I was very fortunate. And in 2009 was the first time I had a little sickness. I had a lump on my throat, no big deal. I go to the doctor, get it checked out, and the doctor came back 45 minutes later. They did a biopsy on the spot. And I never forget the exact words of the doctor, uh, what he said. He says, uh, I have bad news and bad news. And I thought he was sort of joking. And he said, the first bad news is you have stage four throat cancer, buddy. And the second bad news is I don't think we can do anything to help you. Now think about that for a moment. Never been sick a day in your life to go to the doctor and told you're going to die in three months. Let that sink in just for a moment. That's what happened to me. My whole world changed that day. And uh, so what they were trying to do is prolong my life. The cancer is the size of a walnut in the base of my throat. Both lymph nodes. It was spreading rapidly, stage four. So what we did is we started chemo and radiation in January of 2009. And uh, I had five months of chemo. If you ever know anybody under chemo, it's not a pleasant experience. Because of sickness, your hair falls out now. <laughs> but I, you can get canker sores and blisters and things from the chemo. And so I had chemo for five months, not one chemo, but five different types of chemos, trying to find the right combination. And on top of that, for dessert, they threw in 32 days of radiation. I lost 80 pounds, went from 230 to 150. I couldn't walk 10 feet without a little cart. And I had no food or water in my mouth for over five months, four and a half months. I'm being kept alive on a feeding tube in my stomach. It was pumping a shake 24 hours a day. And a water tube in my chest, you know, IV. They called me the tube boy. And after four and a half months of hell, literally hell, I mean, there was one time Mr. Ed remembers this, I threw up for 48 hours straight and had nothing to throw up. It's miserable. It's a miserable way to die. In April, the doctor came to me and said, Bill, we can't give you any more chemo. It'll kill you. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> give me a little more chemo. <laughs> I'm dying anyway. Now we're going to bring you a nice hospice nurse. And she was very nice, very professional. No personality. I'm dying, and I'm still trying to hold on to my personality. That's all I had left. I called her Nurse Ratchet. <laughs> She would come every week and change out the tubes, do the vitals, sit it back on the computer, you know, the data. She didn't think it was very humorous when I told her, could I punch in the numbers and watch myself die? I'm just trying to hold on to my humor. I'm dying. Then I get a call, I changed my life from Mr. Ed Johnson. He's been a dear friend of mine for a long time. He called me up and he was so funny. He said, Bill, I think I have an answer to your problem. And I'm looking for what? Hope. hope. And I said, what is that, Mr. Ed? I'm looking for hope. He says, this miracle water. I said, Mr. Ed, I can't even get water in my mouth. I've got a tube. And uh, he said, by the way, this miracle water is in Japan. I can't go 10 feet. I'm going to go to Japan and get miracle water that I can't put in my mouth. <laughs> Hope started diminishing. He said, now we're going to be doing a demo, just like you saw here. The very first demo at Michael Johnson's house, his son. The very first demo was April the 18th of 2009. I had to get to that demo, though, right? Can't drive. I have another friend. I do have two friends. His name is Saul. I don't know if Michael has a slide presentation not too long. <coughs> Saul is my neighbor down the street. He drove me to the demo. And I go to the demo not looking like I'm looking now. <laughs> and, and I saw hope. I saw hope. Had no money to buy it. <laughs> they went to hope again. Especially when they told me four thousand dollars almost died. <laughs> because when you're not working you have what? No, no income. income. I had no income. But I still got a car payment, house payment right, utility <laughs> bills, all that stuff to pay. But I was very smart. Before I got sick, I loaded up on credit cards. I had good credit, like 900s. <laughs> so I got five MasterCards and five Visas. I didn't want to discriminate. 
ten plastic. And you know what I did? I went out and got five thousand dollar cash advances on every one of them. I got fifty thousand dollars at twenty three percent interest on a cash advance. I'm making all my house payment, mortgage payment, car payment, right? Except I'm not paying the credit card companies back, and they don't like that. They you get those phone calls <laughs> from the bouncers, right? I would wait by the phones so I have somebody to talk to. <laughs> they think it was very humorous. They said, Mr. Powers, you haven't made your $1,400 payment this month. And I said, what are you going to do if I die? <laughs> I'm dying. And then when I got that machine, and the only way that I could get this machine, because I had no money to buy it, I had none. I'm $50,000 in debt. My credit score is about a 20. The company has a plan. I don't want you to be in this position. I'm telling you this for one reason. There is no excuse for anybody not getting this technology. None. I'm 50000 in debt. I'm dying. I have no money and no credit. And the company says, Bill, we'll give you a machine anyway on a handshake with no credit check. It's a pretty good deal, isn't it? Yeah. When the machine arrives, Michael showed you how it worked, pushing all these fancy buttons. Nobody showed us how it worked. We didn't know. First demo. I said, <laughs> I looked at that hose, and I said, top button got to be better than the bottom button. <laughs> Put that hose in my mouth. <laughs> Nothing happened. Remember, no liquid in there for four and a half months. But I stayed with it. That's all the hope I had. 20 minutes later, water started going down. 20 minutes. My mouth was covered with all those canker sores and blisters. 48 hours, every canker sore and blister is gone. Nurse Ratchet's freaking out. <laughs> she says, can I try some of that water? I didn't have a fancy jug like Michael has. All I have was an old milk jug. <laughs> I dumped the milk out, gave her a gallon of water. Remember, she always came in on when? Monday. She calls me on Wednesday. She's never called me. The only thing she said, Bill, i got to come by and see you on Friday. I said, oh boy, something bad that milk jug or I'm dying again. <laughs> she comes in on Friday. I can walk to the door a little bit. Doorbell rings and there's Nurse Ratchet with her credit card in her hand. She says, Bill, before you die, I need that machine. She said, I have fibromyalgia for 11 years. I was going to retire from nursing. You were on my last patients. I am pain free for the first time. I want that machine. I said, Well, you're not getting that machine. <laughs> we had an argument. She said, How do I get one? I said, I don't know. <laughs> Call Mr. Ed. <laughs> Mr. Ed says, Well, when you can't sell it to her, Bill. When you got your machine, you got a distributor number that came with it. Have her order factor direct under your number. She did. Her machine arrived. And here's where my life started turning around. I'm feeling better, but 10 days later, a thank you check that Michael was sharing with you shows up in my mailbox for that purchase, that referral, for $285. That was a godsend. Yeah. And then my friend Saul, guess what he did? He got one. And then guess what Saul said? Started telling all his friends and stuff, buy machines so we can help Bill out, get more checks. <laughs> so, because every time Saul shared with somebody down the line, right, he got a check, I got a check, cut through the chase my first year, $106,000 in thinking checks. Ooh. And never sold a machine. Never sold a machine. I paid off all my credit cards. I'm now debt free, number one. And the second, big miracle that happened is 16 weeks after drinking the water, 16 weeks after drinking the water in December of 2009, I went back to the doctor for another checkup. First of all, the doctors, they couldn't believe it. They said, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be dead. <laughs> and they did another biopsy, and I'm 100% cancer free. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap it up with this. The water did not heal me. No. That's very important. Do not tell anybody the water heals. What the water did is got my immune system back in balance, and my body what? Yes. Heals itself. Uh, my complete story is in this book called Killing Cancer, Not People. Uh, Mr. Ed Johnson has some extra copies. If you know anybody that has cancer, I would really encourage you to get this book, Killing Cancer, Not People, for two reasons. One is my stories in here. I'm world famous. <laughs> Going on Oprah next week. <laughs> Chapter 6 talks about this technology. Get this book, uh, save you a little bit of cost. But 
The other thing I want to share is your mission, my mission in life now, is to share my story with other people, to help other people. I average literally 15 to 20 phone calls a day from people that are looking for hope, looking for hope. Mr. Ed gave me hope. The richest man in the United States, Steve Jobs, also had cancer in 2009. Nobody shared with him like Ed shared with me. So I'm pleading with you. There's no excuse not to get the technology. Just get the technology. Share water with other people. That's your whole mission in life. Thank you, guys. Give a round of applause.